What's going on guys? Today I want to expose the real reason why most lifters are hurting the lower backs. And contrary to popular belief, it's not because they're lifting too heavy. Because that's what you're going to hear from guys. They're going to say, if you lift too heavy, you're going to get snapped the hell up. And they like to reference Ronnie Coleman, which is a very strange example because you ain't Ronnie Coleman. You're not Mr. Olympia status, nor do you lift his weights or use his form. So it's a bit weird that guys would make that comparison. But at any rate, I want to talk about why you're getting lower back pain. First of all, debunking the heavy thing. So listen up, man. Lifting heavy does not get people injured. What gets people hurt is using bad form and having muscle weaknesses, okay? And if we want to look at some real examples of guys who have been lifting heavy their entire lives, uh, just look at the old-time strongman. A lot of them made it to their 70s and continued deadlifting in their 70s for information and did not have any lower back pain whatsoever. And most of these guys were huge on singles, singles, triples, all that type of stuff. And there's tons of my subscribers, some of you guys are in your 50s and 60s, who lift heavy on a daily basis, okay? Uh, there might be other risks involved with that if you're using the Valsalva maneuver, but in terms of hurting your lower back, uh, no, if you have the correct musculature, the right movement patterns, proper form, you're not going to get hurt. That's just a terrible misconception. And honestly, like if you look at proper programming in general, uh, volume intensity is managed such that you're not gonna have these problems. Like, you shouldn't be having fatigue in your lower back 24-7. If you're doing that, even though your form is good and stuff, it means the programming's off. You're not managing volume intensity. You're not using special exercises. A ton of stuff that's going wrong. But yes, you could lift heavy your whole life. You could lift heavy well into your 70s if you do things properly, okay? So it's not that's not the reason. Uh, that said, one of the most common reasons why guys are getting hurt is because they're sitting down all day. That's right. One of the most common reasons of back pain has nothing to do with lifting weights. It's the fact that guys are sitting on their ass all fucking day. You see, look at guys who work desk jobs. Uh, where are the heavy deadlifts? Where's the heavy rows? Where's the heavy yoke training? Where's the rack pulls above the knee? There's none of that shit. They're just sitting on their ass all day, which is compressing their spine, which is rounding their spine, which is causing them to have back injuries in the long run. How come the most sedentary group of all time, desk workers, have lower back pain? It's because they're sitting all day. And that's what a lot of you guys are doing. You work in a desk job, maybe you go to school, you do something. The point is, you're sitting all freaking day, and that's why your lower back's hurting. I know this to be true. This is probably the most common reason of all, unrelated to lifting. See, if you made a slight little change, such as getting up every 30 minutes, going for a slight walk, you would see tremendous differences in how your back feels. If you didn't sit all day, if you had a standing desk, that would make a tremendous difference. If you didn't sit down on the bus or metro, and you, just went, and you just held on to the fucking poles for once, again, that would help a lot. So, and even driving. If you didn't drive as much, maybe you took more walks, you'd have less back pain. See, that's why most guys are all fucked up. They're sitting too much. And I also myself too. Uh, the times where I had to work on serious projects and I'd be on my computer all freaking day, uh, that's when my lower back would hurt. It had nothing to do with lifting weights. No, nothing, okay? So the first step is to correct your bad sitting habits, all right? Secondly, you need to start doing more lower back and ab work. I have no fucking idea why people are not isolating this area. To me, that is absolute madness and it explains why guys are getting hurt. You see, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And in this case, if your core is weak, and I would say the core encompasses everything, the entire midsection, well, guess what? You're going to get hurt. You're going to get all snapped up because you got a fucking weakness. And when you have a weakness in the core area, you start using bad form. Your back starts rounding. All this rounding shit that you see guys doing is because they're weak. A strong lifter doesn't have to round the lower back unless it's a part of their technique or whatever. But you, you don't have to round your lower back, man, on a deadlift. If that's happening, it's because you're doing something wrong with your training. You probably have very weak posterior chain. So what do you have to start doing? Isolating the fuck out of your lower back and abs. Every time you go to gym, I'm going to say two to four times a week, you should be doing some reverse hypers, which are excellent for traction of the spine. You should be doing standard hyperextensions, which, yes, it does put you in spinal flexion, but guess what? Uh, sometimes when you deadlift heavy, you're going to end up in spinal flexion. So if you never trained that, you might get hurt. So uh, hyperextensions with a barbell in your hand might correct you if that ever happens. Uh, same thing for good mornings. You should be doing good mornings. It doesn't have to be super heavy. It could be high reps. It could be with bands. But do some good mornings, man. Even pull-throughs. People who have herniated discs can typically handle pull-throughs. But the point I'm trying to raise is that you need to develop the fuck out of this area. Same thing for the uh, the abs, the obliques. All are extremely important, especially obliques, man. 
nobody hits their obliques anymore because they don't want to have a blocky waist. Uh, well, sorry, man. If you're in this game for performance, health, longevity, all that good stuff, you better work your fucking obliques. Because you don't want to be Mr. Waist, Mr. Tiny Waist, who has all kinds of back problems. Like the Hosh Twins. Dudes have tiny, tiny waist, but they have a screwed up back. You know, if their obliques got a bit thicker, it would probably help them. You know that? So sometimes you got to get out of this aesthetic shit and realize that it's actually harming you. So develop your obliques, develop your abs, do a lot of standing ab exercises, which is most specific for building your squat, deadlift, and most uh, movements in general that tend to aggravate the spine. Okay? So that said, the third reason why guys are hurting the lower backs is because they're doing too many pulls off the floor. Yeah, pulls off the floor has the most injury risk of anything else that I can think of. It's a very high risk, especially if you start pulling in the 500s. And if you lift long enough, like five plus years, you're going to reach 500 plus pounds on the deadlift. And the risk is high at that point. And if you didn't do the things I talked about before, you're already going to be fucked. But secondly, the fact that you are pulling so frequently off the floor could get you hurt. So my recommendation is that you cut your deadlifting frequency down to one to two times a week. Conventional is what I'm talking about here. So you should be deadlifting once or twice a week. And the other times should be accessory work. That's fine. It should be block pulls, rack pulls, different deadlift variations. The point is don't be doing the regular conventional deadlift every fucking time because that's how you're going to hurt your back. I understand that if your form is perfect and all that stuff, you're going to be good. But all I'm trying to say is that there is a higher risk in doing the conventional deadlift because there's a large moment arm. Your, your torso is at a very uh, disadvantageous position and there's a lot of things that could go wrong. And if you end up in a compromised position for even half a second, that could be the death of your career. Oh, and that's going to bring me to no, uh, another point. Don't overdo it on the volume for your deadlifts. Don't be doing reps above five for the most part. Don't be doing reps above 10 if I want to be more precise. Because it's not lifting heavy that's going to fuck up your back. It's doing high reps, which leads to for, uh, form breakdown due to fatigue, which leads to you fucking up your back. I would argue that reps between five and 10 is more dangerous than a one rep max. So be careful. Don't do high reps on deadlifts. If you want to do uh, lots of volume, either Bulgarian light that shit or do speed pulls. 10 sets of two. You're all good. That's like doing two sets of 10. You see my point? So be careful. And then the final reason why guys are hurting the lower backs is because they're not doing partial exercises because they have been taught that full range of motion is the only way to go. Well, unfortunately, this full range of motion thing is not developing their tendons and ligaments to their full capacity. It's not overloading the body. And you see, this is why you need partials. You need to start doing rack pulls above the knee in particular. Because it's going to develop your entire midsection. It's going to supercharge your body. If you do the rack pull above the knee. Anytime you go do a row, you're not going to feel shit in the lower back. Because you're going to be motherfucking supercharged. Everything's going to feel light in your hands. You're going to feel so good that nothing can hurt you. Like people like to say that front squats and overhead press are great for the core. And when I hear this comment, it's like, man, do you even rack pull above the knee? Because rack pulls are going to do so much more for you in terms of standing ab strength than any overhead press or front squat. And like I said, it's going to sh uh, strengthen the tendons and ligaments, which prevent injuries. And you know what else prevents injuries? I know what I'm going to say next. Sounds like a controversial statement, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say it anyway. Cheat rows and cheat drugs. Oh, yeah. You know how people get hurt, my man? When they've been doing strict form all their life, and then one day they end up in a compromised position, and it's boom, snap, motherfucking city. You know who doesn't get hurt? Guys use a little bit of body English on the rows. People who, they don't want to have their torso so fucking straight. They raise it a little bit. These are the guys that don't get hurt, believe it or not. You might think it's the opposite, but you're wrong. Because using the cheat form ensures that you just can't get hurt. There is no such thing as a compromised position because you're already doing that in a sense. So if you can adapt to a cheating style, you're never going to get hurt, okay? And I'm just... Keep in mind, I'm not a fucking medical professional. I'm just giving you my own experiences and advice here. But I'm telling you off thorough observation that all the guys I know fucked up their backs. They all did perfect form. And I've had guys train with me that use perfect form. They try using my methods. They get all snapped up because they're fucking weak. And they're not doing exercises that overload. Whenever you do a cheat row, whether it be a T-bar row, a penalty row, whatever, you're building the tendons and ligaments in a way that regular reps would never offer. So make sure you start doing some partial reps. Or make sure you start including some accommodating resistance if you don't want to do the half rep shit. But the point is, you want to do additional shit other than a full range of motion competition movement. There's a difference between building strength and testing strength. Oh, and if I can give you one final bonus of this video, I'd recommend that you start doing some GPP. Hell yeah, start doing some GPP, man. Start pushing on that prowler, 
start doing some sled pulls, all that shit is going to traction the spine, the velvet posterior chain, which is going to further keep you safe in the lower back. Because most guys who, uh, they get lower back problems, it's because they have weak cores, they have weak posterior chains, and it is what it is. Oh, and you know what? One final tip. I know I said the other tip was going to be my final point, but this is my final tip. Periodize your shit, please. If you don't periodize, you're going to overreach, you're going to have fatigue, you're going to have muscle soreness. It's not going to be a good thing. So periodize your motherfucking training. Okay, whatever it may be, a linear, concurrent, undulating, I don't care which one it is. Periodize, and you're never going to be lifting too heavy, too light, etc. And you're going to be picking the right movements that keep you injury free. So with all these things said, I think you should be fine. And I hope that this video helps you out in preventing lower back pain. Or if you already have it, I hope that it alleviates some of the pain. So that's it. Give me your feedback down below. Do you have any other additional tips for dealing with back pain? I want to know. And with that, I will talk to you all next time.